Hey, hello everyone. Today, welcome back right to our most frequently asked examination questions focusing on H2 chemistry. Today, we're going to focus on hydrogen derivatives. Now, this is one of the most popular examination questions right, that you will find in your tenure series. So, let's take a look together. So, we have a question here that's taken from 2009, paper 3, question 4D. So you can see you have this very big gigantic molecule here. They say this big gigantic molecule is synthesized by using NH3 and compound J to form the target product. Now the first question they ask is what type of reaction is occurring here? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find out, hey, is this a nucleophilic sub or is there an electrophilic sub, so on and so forth. So I check. If you want to be a nucleophilic sub, first thing is you must have a nucleophile attacking a carbon. So I notice, hey, there's N here. Whenever you have an N, you must always think of a lone pair of electrons. So which means this is a nucleophile. So when the nucleophile attack, hey, does you, you notice that there's two Br here? And for some reason, the two Br left the molecule. So this also gives me a very good indication that this must be the nucleophile attacking this carbon that kick out the two Br molecule. So which means it must be what we call the nucleophilic. Substitution reaction. Alright, so this is how the reaction goes. So let's take a look at number B. Suggest so a structure and name of the compound J. So right now you have this plus this, okay? So which means that I need to reduce reverse engineering my compound here to deduce what's my compound J. So how do I deduce this? Very simple. This is what you're gonna do. You are going to reverse engineering. So the trick here is you must remember this is a carbon, this is a carbon here. So I'm going to ignore the hydrogen. So the rule is every time you cut a CN bond, okay, you cut a CN bond, and you cut a CN bond, this is called thinking backwards, right? The official name is called retrosynthesis, but it's not so important about the official name. More important is about the technique, how you solve it. So whenever you cut a CN bond, I want you to install a halide onto the carbon. Then you install a H onto the nitrogen. Okay, so this is always a rule. When you cut a CM bond, you attach a halide directly to the carbon, you attach a H to the end. So the strategy will always work. So halide can be anything as a fluorine. In this case, since this is bromine, I'm going to install a bromine here. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to focus the shape. Same thing. So I'm going to put a BR here. So I'm going to put a BR here because I cut away two times. So that means, let me just write down the molecule. Okay. CH2, CH2, CH3. Then, since I cut away a total of two times, so which means that originally it has one hydrogen, you will cut two times, you will install two more hydrogen, this will give you NH3. So, which means that this is your compound J. So, I can write down, this is your compound J. Okay, then we resolve the first one. Second, I need to name the compound. So, to name the compound, you must first thing first, go calculate the number of carbon atoms present in the structures. So, we count it right. Let's begin from here because this is the part where you see the halogen, which is the functional group. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight that means uh, it is a octane molecule because there's a total of eight carbon. So let me write down this is octane because there's no alkene present, so I put A and E. Next, I also need to indicate hey, where is my bromine located? So you're going to check uh, this is a first position of a bromine. First, one, eight, one, two, three, four, five. So which means bromine located on the first and the fifth position. So I'm going to write down one comma five, and this will be dibromo. Right, one five dibromo octane. So this is the target molecule that you actually form in this case. Now, let me move on to question number part C. So if we take a look at number part C here. When your compound J, which is this molecule, is reacted with NaOH in ethanol. So whenever you see NaOH in ethanol, you must recall NaOH, the purpose is to remove an acid. The ethanol is to help to remove the acid in the molecule. So in other words, this is called your elimination reaction. To remove HX. So in this case, you're trying to remove your HBr. So you see, uh, there's an adjacent H here. And there's an adjacent Br here. So this will be HBr. Then this one is a H. And you also can remove two HBr. So two HBr to be removed. So a mixture of four alkenes can be formed with the formula of C8H14. So suggest the structure of these four isomers. And you may use skeletal 
uh, representation for your answer. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to present the J in a linear structure first so it's easier to observe. So this is what I'm going to do right now. So I'm going to draw 8 carbon. Okay, so this is 8 carbon. So on the first position, let me just use a different color. In okay, the first position, I have a BR. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So on the fifth position, I put another BR group. Alright, so this is basically the molecule of a J. Then, we go through elimination. So when you go through elimination process, then I'm just going to find out all my H. So let me just put here, this is a H, and this is a H, and this is a H. So there's a few ways of elimination. So let's consider the possibility. Possibility, first one, eliminate here. Second possibility, they eliminate here. Can you see that? So let me just highlight that. So first way, eliminate here. Second way, the B and the H, eliminate away. So you form the first isomers. So we're going to draw out the first isomer first. So let me just draw the molecule. So this will be first one. Okay. First one. So you notice that whenever you think of CC double bond, you must think of cis trans isomers. So we're going to check what is cis trans isomers. This one got two H here. So CC double bond, you have two H on one side. That means all the group are the same, which means there will be no cis trans. But you notice that there's a H here, there's a H here. Oh, they are in opposite direction. So therefore, there's a trans isomers. So we can also consider another isomers here, which is your cis. So we draw this way. And follow by, let me check, okay. Mm. So you see, uh, this one got 2H in this position. Uh, so this is your trans and this is your cis. Okay, this is your trans and this is your cis. This will be two isomers. Now we're going to draw another two more isomers. Because not only your HBR can eliminate on the left, it also can eliminate on the right. So there are two possibilities. So this is what I'm going to do right now. We're going to eliminate on the right-hand side. So this time now, let me use maybe this color. Let's try. Oh, okay, still good. So you can remove this HBR. So we're going to draw another possibility. So let me draw out the possibility of the molecule. So let me just draw the first one. Okay. So the first one is to remove the HBR here. Okay, first one. Then you notice that the H is below, H is below, then the two H is right here. So which means that this part of the molecule should remain unchanged, there is no cis trans, but there is a cis trans here. This is your trans. So I can draw another molecule, which is your cis. So let me show you how I draw the cis molecule. So we're going to draw this way. So we draw cis. Here. You see this uh, cis, that means that two H is facing one another, then this one is HH. Right? So this is the trans isomers and this is cis isomers. So total, one, two, three, four. Alright, so I hope you enjoyed this video. So you can put a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel and we will be updating right, this channel very frequently with the most frequently asked examination question and also possible some other video lesson that targets some of the most difficult chapters. Not only for H2 chemistry, we're also doing for uh, junior college, for your O level, IEP level, as well as IB level. And thank you so much for watch watching. So this is Dr. Alkin. I'm going to sign off now.